went to all the Stanford camps growing up, went to Tara's camp, <laughs> as most people probably around this area have, and um, played soccer and basketball pretty much as my two main through high school. And so I ended up picking soccer, and I was a goalie, I was a goalkeeper. It drove me to be successful in all aspects of my life, being in athletics and around athletics. I never like second guessed like being a female athlete. And a lot of my friends stopped sports and I just had a love for it and a passion for it and I wasn't gonna give that up. Eighth grade, I came to the Stanford camp here and that was the first time I was able to meet Eileen and Tara and it was just, as a little girl, it was just amazing to be able to see such women in strong like leadership positions that who were good at their job. You know, I had the opportunity to go play D1 softball at DePaul and was just really taken aback when I got there that my athletic director at the time, or she's still there actually, she's been there over 30 years, she was female. Jean Lenti Ponsetto is her name. I was really inspired to continue to want to be in sports and continue to try to set an example for other people. I was in fourth grade when I started playing basketball and it's kind of a funny story. My mom was my first basketball coach and neither one of us knew a single thing about the game. It, we, <laughs> my mom came home with the book, Basketball for Dummies, and we learned <laughs> the, the rules, the game. I knew nothing. I, someone wanted me to play because I was tall for my grade and for my age. Got recruited to come to Stanford to play basketball and I remember at that point the decision seemed much more simple uh, than it does today. I thought, geez, if someone will, you know, take me to come to Stanford and they'd actually let me in, playing basketball there for Tara is something that would just be incredible and, and life-altering. My mom was um, an avid sports player as well. She played softball and did different rec leagues when my sister and I were young. So uh, growing up, we really just grew up in the gym with my dad, and he really opened the doors for us to um, experience sport. I was fortunate to have parents that really understood the value of teamwork and competition. Growing up uh, from Brooklyn, New York, and grew up, uh, moved out to New Jersey, Title IX just came into effect when I was going into the seventh grade. And then when I got to high school, uh, they just started adding girls sports. We had the GAA, the Girls Athletic Association, but it was a battle. And it's uh, so nice to see how, how it's evolved. I think there's a, a whole lot more to go, but that started everything. Watching them grow, quote unquote, grow up or mature is one of the most amazing parts of this job. Some of my closest friends now come from um, athletes that have graduated in the past and they still call and will ask for advice or they'll call and just check in and just being able to develop those types of relationships there's not really a word that's big enough to describe what it means to me. The biggest thing that was the draw for me here was truly this staff. So when I think about the reasons why I was so attracted to coming back to Stanford, yes, it's Stanford. Yes, it's in my hometown. There are a number of factors, but what sealed the deal for me was getting to be around our staff and seeing how they respect each other looking up to like women who have done it themselves and being surrounded by women who who are strong leaders and strong and their mothers as well and their coaching it's just like inspiring it's inspiring for these girls and i think where i am now is that one day i'm not there yet but one day i hope to be in a position where i can preach that and to be a leader tar has just been a positive influence to me, I mean, at the beginning, she asked me what I wanted to get out of this, and I said as much as I could possibly put in, and she asked me for the end goal, and I was like, I want to be a coach, I want to get my master's, and she was all for it. To be able to, to work for the best and have Tara, you know, kind of have a direct line to one of the greatest coaches, basketball coaches ever, it's been a real blessing for me. I was in seventh grade, and I went to a game at UW. I just had this, like, I want to do that someday. And it was the seventh grade, I remember that moment, like, it was just yesterday. And I, I want to play in the Pac-10 Pac back then. And so you fast forward, my sophomore year of high school, I committed to Washington State really early. And that's just, I knew as like the Pac-12, I, I wanted to go back to Washington, living in Minnesota at the time. You know, as I'm navigating my career now and, and professionally where I want to head, and I would really ground myself in my mother was I think the first woman that I looked up to. And a lot of people could say that, right? They look up to their parents, 
But I think back to my mom who was a, you know, a Title IX coordinator for a school district in the 70s when being a Title IX coordinator was not the uh, in vogue or cool thing to do. Uh, so I learned a lot then about equality for boys and girls. There are a lot of options for young women to get to a place that is as high level, high caliber as where we are here at Stanford. Um, what I would recommend to young women out there is take advantage of every opportunity. I didn't just wake up one day and get to work with women's basketball at Stanford. I definitely had to take advantage of the opportunities to volunteer at high schools in the athletic training room, volunteer while I was in college, get different experiences working with different people and in different environments. As far as playing college basketball, I think I um, saw it on TV um, and in person a lot. Growing up in Las Vegas, you know, UNLV, the men's basketball team was really prominent kind of in the early 90s and so um, we went to as many games as we could and my dad even got my sister and I to be ball girls. When, when I was looking, I was playing field hockey and basketball and softball. Uh, I could have gone to some schools with some scholarship monies just for field hockey and then just for basketball, but I really wanted to do at least those, those two. And I ended up going to a Division three school, but it ended up being a great place at Ohio Wesleyan University and I got to play three sports at this school. And I, and I think that and what I tell young people all the time is, you know, everyone kind of focuses on D1. And as a mother now of having two sons come to the sister, everyone's like, D1, D1. Well, D1, 2, 3, 8, there's a lot of other places to play you find where you you fit. By my senior year, I knew I wanted to stay within women's basketball. I just had this like gut feeling that I wasn't, I was ready to be done playing, but I wasn't ready to move on from that environment and that atmosphere. So I reached out to different head coaches in the Pac-12 specifically and Stanford was actually the only school that got back to me and they told me about this internship opportunity and to be to have that opportunity to continue in the women's basketball world not only that but working at one of the best universities and one of the best teams in the country I couldn't turn that opportunity down. I love being able to be a female coach for these athletes and inspire them and show them honestly that you can do a role that has been traditionally occupied more by men. One day I hope to be just a leader in life and to just grow from it and teach people that like you can be whatever you want to be, you just have to follow your love and you have to follow your passion. It's been intense at some points and I've just, I've learned a lot and I think just being in the thick of things in Pac-12 it's just been an experience I can't get anywhere else to be able to learn and see how Tara thinks and how she evaluates things. Uh, really my mom and Tara have just absolutely have a, had a pivotal uh, influence on what I'm doing and I, you know, you can just hear them in your head throughout the day, which is somewhat scary, but also pretty cool. I remember watching Becky Hammond and the Colorado State team and just looking out there, literally sitting courtside with my little towel in hand, thinking that's what I want to do. And that's what I want to be, uh, a college basketball player. And I want to play in a tournament like this and I want to make shots like she was making and, um, and have fun with um, other women on the court. Coming to Stanford in general was just a dream come true. And then having success as a team was so surreal. I think we are rounding a corner in terms of people recognizing that women's sports are fun to watch and fun to be a part of. And they're not necessarily the same as men's sports, so they can't be compared apples to apples. For young women watching our team right now and our coaching staff and seeing all the women out there is very helpful and can inspire them to know that they are capable of doing big things. This experience has been remarkable. I've learned so much just in terms of like actually coaching and I think these coaches are preparing you to be a coach. I want to stay involved in sports as much as I can and right now it's set in stone in coaching. It's, it's a real privilege to be in that position to try to help younger women in the industry advance in the way that they'd like to advance. Um, I think I've, I also have the luxury, again, of being back at Stanford and having Tara still as my mentor here. Uh, and Bernard Muir, our AD, has been absolutely wonderful and has pushed me in this capacity 
to step out and take it seriously. And it is a point of privilege to help other people. Props to Tara for being the main role model for all of us. I mean, I, I look up to her and I think what she's done with this program is amazing. And I'm so, so honored to be a part of it. I have been super fortunate and blessed from Tara specifically. And having a woman that is so committed to empowering other women and giving opportunities, that is why I am here. That's why I first came to Stanford as a student athlete. Um, and that's why I am back on the other side now, which is still very surreal for me at times. Um, but it is because of her that I have had this opportunity. And so when I think about, you know, how can I even pass down her own, her legacy that she has instilled in me, it is doing the same for the next generation of young people. We need to get people on the bandwagon of women's sports because it's coming whether people like it or not. It's that fine balance between being having good sporting events to actually watch and having networks that carry them so that enough people can see them and then people that actually follow up and watch the regular season games. But you can't say we're not playing, the women aren't playing at high caliber. We certainly are playing at high caliber. You can't say it isn't exciting if you watch all the different teams, uh, including ours. It's, it's exciting. It's fundamental basketball. I think locally, what do we do? We support our women's teams, right? We go out, we buy tickets, we tune in, we watch the games. And I think as we expose people to really good sport, we'll get away from who's playing it, right? Be it a man or a woman.